to be honest, I've been pulled over, you know, a couple times in my life. Not usually, though, luckily for me, you know, being who I am, uh, being fortunate enough to be kind of recognized across the world, uh, I usually get let off. So, uh, you know, I grew up in a predominantly uh, African-American, Hispanic, uh, you know, uh, area. So uh, my brother experienced that. He's, he's, you know, seven, eight years older than me, but I never really, um, you know, had to deal with a lot of uh, police brutality or, you know, racism of that matter. But uh, I have had my few, few moments, but I don't, I couldn't really, um, you know, I don't want to really go into detail right now, but um, what was your first question? Do you think we'll see a meaningful change stemming from the pro from these protests regarding racial injustice and, and hopeful, you know, radical police reform? Well, first, I hope so. First of all, second of all, um, I, I honestly do, um, at least, you know, my generation, we're so diverse, um, you know, in, in so many ways. I, I know, you know, um, just 40 years ago, I've seen a lot of videos on Twitter, you know, a lot uh, 40 years ago, uh, you know, my generation's parents grew up in segregated times. And, um, you know, now um, it, it's, uh, it, it's all coming together. You know, I feel like uh, it, it's, it's tough. Um, but I, I, I do, I, I do feel like we'll see change just because like I said, my generation, um, you know, we're so diverse. Uh, we, we don't, we know, we don't really know what we know what racism is, but I feel like, there's not a lot of it um, in my generation. I know the generations above me and my parents' generation, there's a lot of racism, whether we want to believe it or not, um, there is. And, you know, there's a lot of hate in this world, but at the same time, and I, I think that this, what's happening, what we're seeing right now, um, it is huge just because I feel like, you know, there's all the rioting, I obviously don't, um, I don't condone the rioting and stuff like that. Um, but the peaceful protests, I think they're amazing. I think what everything's going on is amazing. Um, and I think that's just the start of it. Obviously, you're seeing a lot of big time people, a lot of owners, um, you know, CEOs, of companies, stuff like that, um, you know, speaking up on it. And I, I agree, you know, it, it's not enough to just, you know, not be racist. You know, we got to be anti-racist. You got to hold everybody accountable because at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to is, everyone holding each other accountable. Um, and I, I could keep going on and on, but uh, I, I feel like we will have change. Whether it takes years, I, I feel like uh, we're getting there, at least, you know, making a, making a step towards it. Hey, Kyler. Um, in terms of football, obviously COVID has changed the landscape of this entire off season and probably going forward. Um, what have you been able to do this off season? I know there's been a lot of talk about when and if you're going to be able to get with some of your receivers. Do you feel like your uh, this lost off season is really going to cost you in terms of whatever advances you could make in year two? Uh, for me, no, it hasn't changed. I mean, I, I tell other people, tell people all the time, I was built for uh, you know the quarantine life just because. I don't really go outside anyways, other than, you know, working out and, and throwing football, but um, no, nah, I don't, I don't see it hindering any, you know, progression or success that comes our way. Um, I'll see all the guys pretty soon here. Um, but as far as me, you know, I've been, been grinding every day. Um, you know, nothing's really changed for me except for, you know, trying to, trying to stay safe and, uh, you know, keep my people safe. So. Hey, Kyler. Um, I was wondering if, if improving the passing game has been an emphasis in, in talks with Cliff and knowing that you've got DeAndre now with, with Fitz and Christian, what is that going to do for you having three pretty accomplished receivers? Yeah. Uh, I think that that is, uh, that's, that's honestly, you know, one of the main, you know, focal points of the next step is, you know, improving our drop back game, which obviously, you know, was kind of, um, uh, some mediocre in, in a way uh, last season, but I think a lot of that comes with, you know, uh, obviously reps, um, time put in with the guys, getting D hop is obviously a tremendous, you know, help for us. And, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to play with him, but um, 
yeah, especially, you know, me, you know, I think we made that stride uh, towards the end of the season, you know, not taking sacks, throwing the ball away. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with helping us, you know, in the drop back game. And, you know, um, once we, you know, I feel like once we take that next step, it will be even more dangerous. Next three questions would be Josh Weinfuss, Mark McClune, and Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, Kyler, it's Josh. Um, this offseason, how much have you been working out? It looks like you, from some of your pictures, look like you put on some weight. What kind of things have you, have you done in the gym? What have you been focusing on? What's that whole routine been like? Uh, obviously not trying to tear my body up, but, uh, you know, four times a week, um, as far as, you know, lifting, mixing and running in there. Um, not trying to, you know, wear my arm down. So we've, we've kind of pulled back as far as throwing goes. But, uh, no, I mean, it, it's, it's been great. Uh, me and my dad working out with, you know, any receivers. We got a lot of receivers in Texas. Obviously, you know, a lot of great athletes come from Texas. So I don't really have an issue getting people to come catch. But, um, no, we're just uh, sticking to the routine um, that I've always really done. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to getting with the guys here pretty soon. Hey, Kyler, thanks for the time today. Hey, uh, curious with the events surrounding uh, George Floyd's death, talks of change, discussions, virtual discussions with your teammates uh, over Zoom and meetings. Has it, uh, has it changed or the way you look at your platform, has it changed the way you, you, you want to present things or, or, or want to present things on your platform, uh, you know, in your second year here? Um, definitely. I mean, I feel like, I feel like now more than ever, people can just say what they want to say. Um, you know, it's not like uh, before. Before what we saw, you know, with his with his death, I feel like it, we had to beat around the bush and you know, kind of just you know, straddle the line and say um, the politically correct thing. And now I feel like you know, holding everybody accountable and saying whatever what's, what's on your chest, saying what's on your mind. Um, I, I think that's the best thing for the world, to be honest, because. Now people realize, you know, the effect that, um, you know, everything that's been going on uh, in the black community is, you know, it, it's, it's been, it's been going on for hundreds of years and everybody knows it, but it's always been just kind of a, a deal. We just, you know, look past and just, you know, act like it wasn't there. There's always been this elephant in the room, but, you know, at, at the end of the day now, I feel like, you know, there is change coming. I feel like, you know, for me, especially, uh, you know, I stand for what's right. Um, I always have, regardless of my skin color, um, you know, if, if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. It's not hard to see. And um, what's been happening is definitely wrong. So uh, it, it, there's no question of what I'll be doing. You know, I'm, I'm not, um, as far as like kneeling and stuff like that, um, you know, I, I'm with what's right and I always will be, so. Hey, Kyler. Thanks for joining us. Um, we talked to Cliff last week about just what the conversations have been like within the team about George Floyd. And you've known Cliff for so long. Have you learned anything new about him and the way he's been handling these conversations? And how involved was he with the conversations in the quarterback room? Um, you know, it, it's uh, uh, he's acted every way I've expected him to act towards the situation, uh, especially with the, you know, the Zoom meetings with the team. Um, you know, like I said, it's uh, it's we're fortunate, you know, to have this platform. You know, I know, coach, one of the, one of our coaches talked about it in the past. You know, they didn't have the platform, they didn't have the the backing up by their owner and head coach uh, to go speak out on these these uh, you know, these views and stuff like this. So now the the fact that we have that um, speaks volumes to you know the the kind of guys that they are. Uh, so I, I know I know us as you know players will you know do the most to. Um, commit to, to commit to this change. Next three will be Richard Sines, Kent Summers, Mike Jarecki. Hey, Kyler. Um, first, just an observation. Uh, the shoe game behind you, man, is strong. Looking pretty good back there. Uh, Appreciate it. Uh, uh, you want to like, I just want to ask, how excited are you to see how much progress you've made? Because uh, the biggest jump you see is from year one to year two. Now that you know what to expect after your rookie season, how excited are you to come back and, and show how much you've grown as a player? Uh, I mean, I, I live, breathe, and eat football. <laughs> so, uh, you know, me personally, I can't wait, you know, uh, just, to, just to get out there with the guys. Um, 
win games. And ultimately, you know, the goal is to win a Super Bowl and bring a Super Bowl back to Arizona. So um, that's that's what I plan to do. And, I, you know, I know I know the guys plan to do that as well. So um, it, it's amazing to, you know, just watching film and seeing things that I didn't see then or, you know, that I knew, but I just didn't see it just because, you know, obviously getting acclimated to the NFL, the league, everybody's better. Um, but even in meetings, seeing stuff and be like, you know, before coach even says anything, um, I already know, you know, I should have did this or I see that now. You know, it, it just – the more you play, you know, the more things click. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's starting to happen. So, Kyler, I uh, appreciate you doing this. Um, as, a, as a leader going into your second year, what, what do you think will be different for you? Will you take on an additional role, um, maybe be willing to be more vocal or now that you're, you've sort of found your place in the league? Yeah, I mean, just being around the guys, um, you know, for as long as obviously for, for this past year, um, me knowing them now, them knowing me, I think we got a lot of, you know, similar faces, not too many guys, you know, gone. Uh, so I think all of that helps. And, um, you know, us just being familiar with each other and, you know, me being the guy now, I think it's, you know, sky's the limit. Um, and, you know, like I said, I can't wait to get back. I know they're excited. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Kyler, Mike Jarecki, back in April, you donated $25,000 towards providing kids meals who are or were affected by COVID-19. What did that mean to you? It was a huge deal. Um, you know, I, I, me personally, going to school, um, you know, I always had a packed lunch. Uh, and, I, you know, me being a spoiled kid that I was, you know, I was upset when I didn't have my packed lunch. I forgot my lunch and I had to, you know, I had to eat school lunch and, you know, I, I had friend, tons of tons of my friends, you know, they grew up on school lunch and not having, you know, a packed lunch every day. So understanding, you know, obviously COVID, you know, taking away kids, you know, going to school and some kids go to school just to eat. So uh, for me, understanding the value of that, um, it was huge for me to just, you know, obviously do what I could. Um, and honestly, like I said, uh, it hit home with me just because I had a, a lot of my friends weren't, you know, didn't grow up as fortunate as me. Um, so I felt like it was it was my duty to you know kind of give back to that. Next three will be Sierra Santos, Jess Root, David Brandt. Hi there. Uh, you touched on not a whole lot of guys being gone. How do you think that's helped? Because we keep on hearing about how great the chemistry is, even though you guys haven't met in person. How much do you think that factors into it? Uh, I know. Um, and, you know, in, uh, in football especially, um, you know, camaraderie, um, you know, the tight-knit groups that I played with, uh, regardless if it was high school, middle school, uh, college, you know, the best teams I've been on um, have been tight. Um, you know, as far as relationships, doing stuff on and off the field. I know it's the NFL. I know it's a little different. Guys have families to go home to and stuff like that. You can't hang around in the locker room all day. But I feel like we got a pretty tight group. Um, guys trust each other. Guys know each other. Uh, very familiar with each other. You know, we got a year in with these coaches, so I, I feel like really the sky's the limit. We kind of hit. We kind of were hitting on all cylinders at the towards the end of the year. Um, had had a lot of close uh, close games throughout the season, but I think we kind of found ourselves. So um, with the addition of a couple guys, obviously, um, you know, some good players to join us. Um, I, I think, like I said, the sky's the limit, and really, you know. If we were to capitalize on a couple of a um, couple of plays here and there during the past season, uh, I think our record would have you know been a little different. So I'm excited to see you know what we do this season. Hey Kyler, this is Jess Root from Cardswire.com. You touched on it a, a little bit, but uh, if you, if you look back over last year, your rookie year, where do you feel you made the biggest strides, the biggest improvement? And looking ahead to this coming year, how much you said the sky's the limit? How good do you expect to be? personally and how much better do you expect the passing game to be uh, where, where do I think I took the biggest jump last year I think um, I think just seeing the defense seeing the field uh, recognizing what they were trying to do to me us um, you know beginning of the year kind of just winging it 
not really understanding, you know, what they were doing. Uh, things were moving a lot faster um, than they had before. Uh, so, you know, towards the end of the season, you know, I, I could, I could, you know, dissect, diagnose things before they happen. And, um, you know, that's where you want to be as a player. You know, the game slowed down for me. And then um, to answer your second part, you know, uh, how good do I think I, I mean, I, like I said, I mean, I don't like to speak on what I'm going to do uh, beforehand. I just like to go out and play my game and let my play speak for itself. So uh, I've always done that, and I, I, that's what I'm going to do. Hey, Kyler, uh, David from the AP. You, you talked about how this generation, especially your generation, is, is real diverse and all kinds of different people. I was just kind of curious, does, you know, having the Korean heritage in, in your family and everything, does that – Having all that, you know, so close to you, your mom, that side of the family, does that give you a unique perspective on this? Maybe kind of give you maybe a perspective that some don't have? Uh, probably. You know, I, I was – like, my friends made fun of me for being Korean. So, I mean, I didn't really get picked on a lot as a kid. But, you know, the times that I did, you know, I think every kid has got picked on. Uh, every kid uh, deals with it at some point. but. At the same time, like like I said, the diversity of my my generation, um, you know, social media, everything. Like you know, you you can put somebody, you see it every day. You know, somebody does something bad, and, and Twitter just finds them. You know, I don't know how, but it just happens. Um, so I think as as we get older, um, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think as as you know, as we get older, at least my generation, I think it'll kind of wipe. Um, you know, we we have the the platform and the chance to fix, you know, racism and uh, the hate in this country. Obviously, you know, in the, in the world, really, there's always going to be hate. But um, I'm confident in, you know, my generation to kind of, uh, you know, fix this. Next three, Tressa Tedrick, Bob McManaman, Kyle Odegaard. Hey, Kyler, Tressa Tedrick, 3TV, CBS 5, Arizona's family. Thank you for your time. Um, Two-part oh. question. Um, one, I wanted to ask, uh, what has your thoughts been on the Cardinals organization uh, with the current climate and uh, support you've seen from other players and kind of their activism and speaking out? I think of Larry Fitzgerald and his article with the New York Times. And then two, what is the history with your shoe game and the elaborate wall you've got behind you? Uh, wait, the first, the Cardinals climate, he's on my like, the weather out there? No, uh, more of like the, the, how the discussions have been and uh, the support you've seen from the team. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's very serious. I mean, this isn't, um, you know, this is nothing to take lightly. I feel like, I feel like, you know, the world is really trying to make a change right now. And I feel like, there, like I said, there's no more straddling the line. There's no more, uh, there's no more buts. There's, you know, if it's right, if it's right, it's wrong, it's wrong. And I feel like everybody's calling people out, which is necessary, even in even in the work realm, even in any sports. Um, all, all great teams that I've been a part part of, you know, everybody, if we're holding each other accountable. If somebody's doing something wrong, you call them out, you let them know. There's no hard feelings. It's all love. At the end of the day, we're trying to reach one goal. And I feel like that's how the world, you know, the world needs to be. Um, you know, all, all the beating around the bush is uh, – it does nothing but cause issues. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm for what's right. And I feel like everybody on the team understands the magnitude of what's going on in the world. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully a lot of everybody else is starting to. So uh, it, I feel like, you know, uh, as a team, I feel like we're on the same page. And the, the shoe game, to be, to be honest, this, is, this isn't really even – one fourth of it. Uh, uh, it, it there's, there's definitely some uh, really expensive, really exclusive shoes behind me, but uh, I, I, all of my shoes aren't here, so I can't really speak. Up. There's not, there's nothing really special about this wall right now. This is, a, it's a new, new home. <laughs> hey, Kyler, Bob, Bob McManaman. Uh, first of all, you, I know you lobbied for CD Lamb. It didn't happen, but you did pick up D Hop. Is that a fair trade off? And uh, Second of all, will you curb any endorsement deals just to focus on football because you lost this off season? Oh man, oh! <laughs> you said I lobbied for CD. You did tell me you you, you were hoping they drafted. Yeah, I did. I, I was. Um, I mean, hell, I play quarterback. Any quarterback, you know, you know, you can't you can't have too many weapons. Never have too many weapons. So. Um, 
yeah, it is what it is. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't make decisions. Uh, but like I said, you know, uh, with D-Hop, man, we, he's he's arguably the best receiver in the game. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to have him uh, as, as, you know, I think everyone that is a part of the Arizona Cardinals should be. Uh, and, and, you know, I, like I said, I don't like to speak on what's going to happen. So, uh, you know, I get to see him soon and we'll get to work. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to get to play with him just because, you know, I know what type of player he is. I know what type of dog he is and, and what type of heart he has. So um, I'm super excited. Uh, and for the endorsement deals, I don't really I don't, I don't really know. I, I'm just worried about playing football right now. So. Kyler, did it feel like the offensive line and yourself kind of gelled toward the end of the season? And and if so, are you happy that a lot of the pieces are the same coming back? Yeah, um, you know, just to you know build that you know that continuity that you know, like I said, that you know uh, those guys got to gel together. More importantly than you know me knowing them. Uh, it's more for me. I, I think it's more important that they know each other. They know, they're not familiar with you know how each other plays. Um, certain things that you can't really uh, teach uh, just by being with each other. So uh, I think that was big for them. Um, and then you know we got Marcus back, drafted a young guy. Um, yeah, I think we got a lot of talent in that room. I think you know, like I said la last year, a lot of those sacks I feel like were on me. So. I don't think I'll be putting those guys in that situation uh, too many times anymore. So, um, you know, if it happens, it happens. But I think we'll be a lot better just from experience. Next three, Josh Weinfuss, Darren Urban, Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, Kyler. Do you feel comfortable practicing, being in a locker room, playing games with guys with uh, with COVID, uh, especially here, spiking? And then um, do you plan on kneeling for the national anthem? Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be kneeling. Um, like I said, I stand for what's right. Um, and at the bottom, that's the bottom line. You know, it, what I call it like I see it. And uh, what's been going on is, is completely wrong. So um, I'll be doing, um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be taking a knee. And uh, as far as, you know, playing games, I don't know. It's, um, it's a weird situation. Um, trying to, you know, trying not to get sick and then trying not to get my family sick. You know, obviously being – if whenever we go back, being with the guys, um, we'll all know, you know, who's had it or who got sick. So I can't really tell you. Um, we're, I don't know. It, it's, it's a weird situation. Um, <laughs> I think everybody's trying not to get sick or doesn't, doesn't want to get sick, you know. So um, – I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know. Kyler, you talked about earlier about the, the meetings and seeing stuff now that you weren't necessarily seeing before. And Cliff had said that you were, you really sounded comfortable in all the meetings you've had. And I'm curious with being able to have all these virtual meetings and not being able to go on the field, what that was like for you this off season, um, not being able to actually test it out on a, on a daily basis and OTAs and stuff and, and have to just be in a room every day and just talk about it. Um, you know, knowing, knowing coach Kingsbury, he's a, he's a walkthrough. He likes walkthroughs more than, you know, sitting in the, sitting in the meeting room, watching film. But um, I, I didn't mind it, you know, just cause just, just sitting down, getting to watch it, you know, um, I, I learned football, you know, any type of way. Uh, it, it just kind of comes natural to me. Um, so whether we're out on the field or watching it, um, I still got the points. And, you know, sometimes it sucks watching it because, you know, it, we look so bad at times. And it was just um, – it, it, it was frustrating to watch and just be like, you know, wow, God, like, what was I doing? Or, you know, why didn't I do this? But um, I think it's all good. Uh, just, you know, you got you to gotta take the good with the bad. Um, and – We'll get on the field eventually, so I'm not really too worried about missing this, you know, this off season as far as uh, the reps go. Um, although I do think it would have helped. I know it, it definitely would have helped. 
Tyler, you're obviously comfortable embracing your platform, but have you found any extra pressure to do so as, you know, quarterbacks are usually leaders on a team? Has that been a factor at all in this? And then very separately, um, DJ Humphreys said you're naming your dog after him? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, my dog's name is Swoosh. Um, definitely, he, he gave me some uh, – some recommendations, but I, I didn't take those uh, at all. I don't know why he came on here and told y'all I was naming my dog after him. But um, no, as far as the platform goes, uh, what was your question? Um, so no, you're good. Just if it's any – if that is any different for quarterbacks in particular. Um, I'll say – No, uh, I, I don't feel any pressure. Um, like I said, you know, I don't really care what anybody thinks about me, never have. Um, but I know a lot of people that do. And uh, for me, being a black man in America, I mean, I, I can, you know, I don't, if it's wrong, I'm going to say it's wrong. And, you know, there's a, to, I feel like personally, um, you know, it, it's on, it's on everybody to hold each other accountable, but more so for me, you know, uh, if you, if you're white and you got white friends that, you know, feel this certain type of way or don't understand what's going on, it's on you to educate them as well as, you know, black, Hispanic, uh, any other ethnicity. If you have any racist friends, it's on you to, you know, stop that immediately and let them know, you know, why that's not right. Or, you know, what's wrong with, you know, the way they think or, um, you know, just opening their opening their eyes and you know allowing them to understand uh, what's wrong uh, with their thought process. Because to be honest, I mean, I, we're all we're all human, uh, and, and I feel like we should all you know be treated equally. I don't I don't get you know I don't get the debate on you know why everyone should be treated equally because their skin color it doesn't make sense to me. But you know, it is what it is right now. We're trying to fix that. So. Okay, we'll wrap it up with the last three. Mark McLoon, Jody Jackson, Howard Balzer. Let's see. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, hey, we saw the video of you uh, vacuuming, it looked like, at your workout facility in, in North Texas uh, a couple weeks back. How is that like a daily chore, or what's uh, was that like a one-time deal? No. Uh, <laughs> there was um, – you know, it's a little warehouse, so there was kind of some bugs on the, on the ground, and I was like, "Yo, we gotta we gotta clean this up. Like, this isn't <laughs> this isn't uh, I, I'm not getting on this ground right now." <laughs> so that was that was kind of where that stemmed from. But uh, yeah, no, I I was just trying to keep it clean, just trying to keep it clean, especially with the you know with the virus and stuff like that. You know, just being aware of everything. Hi, Kyler, Jody Jackson. Just wanted to ask you a little more about working out. You said you were working out with your dad, and I'm just curious, all this time at home, has it been kind of in what ways maybe a good bonding experience with your family? And also, besides video games, which I know you like, have you had any other interests pop up in this time? <laughs> um, besides video, I mean, yeah, really just, you know, playing board games. Um, watching movies and obviously you know the dog's taking up a lot of all of our times here so I the, the bonding the dog really uh you know kind of I feel like you know I feel like I have a son of my own he's uh he's keeping me up late nights early mornings and uh he's uh he's a lot to deal with and I, I think my parents are feeling that too but yeah I think it, I think it has been a great bonding experience just because you know no one's leaving the house uh got to got to find stuff to do uh together so um it, it's been fun it's been good um and like i said i mean i think i was built for this life just cuz i've been you know I, I don't really leave the house much anyways hi kyler there, there's a lot of buzz about the team around the league and patrick peterson has talked about how good he thinks his team can do how important is it and how do you temper expectations and know how hard it is to improve as a team in this league um, me personally, like I said, I don't really like to speak on, um, what's going to take place. Uh, I just like to go out there and perform. 
um, you know, the work, the work's being put in uh, by me and I know a lot of other guys. So, right, right, well, you know, when we touch the field, it's on us to go prove it. It's on us to go do it. You know, there's really not much to talk about. And that's how I just, that's how I feel about things. You know, that the, the, the media, the media loves to talk and loves to spark stuff up. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't go perform, then it's on us. If we do go perform, then it's on us. So that's, that's what we got to do.